Hey everybody, I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Civitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, which is the largest statewide business association in the entire United States of America. It's very cool. It is very cool. Uh, Some might even say the galaxy. The galaxy! Wow, that is a throwback to, what, episode one? Episode one, and like 14 episodes thereafter. So. Wow, yeah, we kept referencing <laughs> that for a long time. <laughs> Um, for more info on us, visit njbia.org. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance. They provide home, auto, and workers' comp insurance, and they're the official sponsor of the show. So if you're looking to change up your coverage, check them out. So with us today is Angela Harrington of Berkeley College. Angela, say hello. Tell us all about yourself. Hello, Vinny and Kate. It's great to be here. It's great to have Happy you. Happy to have you. Great to be here on other people's business. I understand it's your one-year anniversary coming We're up. We're definitely here. coming up on it. Yes! Yeah. It's pretty yeah. exciting. That yeah. is very exciting. Didn't think we'd make it this far. About this time of year, <laughs> last year, we were working on like our, our original sound checks, making sure this was yeah. all going to work out. So maybe a couple years, a couple years, couple weeks from when this airs will be the actual one year anniversary of the first air date. That's so, amazing. Yeah, July 12th, 2018 will be the day. So. Yeah. I remember being very manic that first episode. Yeah. <laughs> We are nervous. We, we got, we've gotten through. We're we've come better. a long way. Yeah. Come a long way. It's great to be here, and I wish you continued success. I can't wait to see what the future brings yeah. for Thank other you. people's business. Thank you. And uh, I want to also give a shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers because it's the only insurance that I've ever had wow. since being a driver in the state of New Jersey. I was going to say me too, but I, I actually had somebody else before them, and then when I came here, I found out about them. I actually didn't know what NJM was until I came here, you know, like you see thousands of car insurance commercials on TV like all the time. I never saw one for NJM. So, you know, for somebody of my generation, if they weren't on TV, right. you never heard of them. But and yeah. as, as we found out when we interviewed Cam Mayo of NJM, they didn't have a marketing department. That's probably why I never saw a commercial. Which is why you never saw a commercial. <laughs> they weren't marketing themselves. But I'll tell you, like when, when I called them and, you know, like I had worked here and I heard about NJM through them. So I decided to give them a call, see how they'd do. They actually quoted me half of what, I'm not even gonna name the company just because of what I'm saying right now. Right. They actually quoted me half of what the guys that I had were quoting me for wow. the same coverage. And I was like, wow, all right, I'm going with you. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, and then like I called the other people back to be like, yeah, I'm leaving, and they decided to match it. And I was like, no, you could have done that all along. Yeah, like that's you know, horrible. like the whole time I've been with you, I at the time I had no tickets, no accidents. You know how difficult it is for like a 17, 18, 19, 20 year old boy yes. not to get an accident, not to get a speeding ticket. I do. And you know, they could have lowered my rates the whole time, and they didn't. So Jack no, asses. off to NJM, never left. That's so, right. Yeah. Good for you. Lots of good value there. Yeah. Absolutely. Love that I was going to say free plug, but they are the sponsor of this show. So. <laughs> That's a really good point. They definitely didn't ask me to tell that story. So That's a really go. good point. Yeah. And I don't know if people know this, but NJBIA actually founded New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance. I know that now. I didn't at the time. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty, uh, it's not many people know that. Period. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's been about 100 years or well, even more than <laughs> more. that now. Yeah, wow. Yeah, more. Back wow. in, uh, I think it was Woodrow Wilson's day. Yeah, we're all getting old, right? Okay. <laughs> Not anyway. as old as Woodrow Wilson. Not as old Hopefully as Woodrow not. Wilson. <laughs> yes. Not. Oh, my goodness. All right. Sorry. We went off on a tangent there. Angela, you were just saying hello, and all of a sudden, <laughs> we're talking about Woodrow Wilson. I love it. I love it. New Jersey, uh, New Jersey's uh, president. So Yes, absolutely. And governor. governor. He actually was president of Princeton University and then governor of New Jersey and then president of the U.S., I think. We've been kicking around the idea of a trivia game on this show, like I a know. New Jersey trivia. Maybe we'll save that for there. I really, really hope we do it. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like fun. I know. That, right? that could be the next chapter. It could maybe, be awesome. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so today... Today's uh, icebreaker is, if you could go back to school, tuition-free, no. no? No, we never really got into that. <laughs> Tell us a little about yourself about Angela. We cut her off. Didn't we? Oh, God, I'm sorry. No, oh, okay. I, I like the icebreaker part because you really, I'm here because, honestly, I'm the vice president of communications and external relations at Berkeley College. <laughs> and in my role, in my role, I have the privilege of serving the community and and sharing our college, our students, and their stories with the community, connecting the college with businesses to help our students and to move the economy forward in New Jersey and New York. We have seven campuses, four in New Jersey and three in New York and, on and online as well. Where we're in New Jersey? In New Jersey, we're in Woodbridge, Newark, Paramus, and Woodland Park. Cool. And we also have one of the best online colleges for bachelor's degrees nice. in the country. Wow. Uh, as recognized by U.S. News and World Report for four consecutive years. 
uh, were in the top ranking as an online college and also for military and veteran students. Very That's cool. Really cool. Very yeah, cool. I'm not even going to go back. Everybody's always asking me to share bloopers on this show, you know, and I'm leaving it. We messed up and we're wow. okay with that. <laughs> you know, there's a very so good reason, I'm but I'm not even going to go there. Let's uh, just, mm, sure. fine, Vinny, fine, uh, yeah. be that way. Uh, I, I like to be the cause of your blooper. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, fine. So today's icebreaker, finally, is if you could go back to school today, tuition free, what would you study? I would study culinary arts so I could face off with Bobby Flay on Iron Chef. I love that you didn't even need to think about that. Nice. You're just like, <laughs> I will be going to culinary school and then I will be facing off with Bobby Flay. And you say that as if you're obviously going to win. Uh, absolutely. I don't plan on uh, challenging Bobby Flay and not winning. Right. I was just going to say, you don't plan on losing, so... You ever see any of the Rocky movies? I had this image of her with like Bobby Flay in her mirror, you know, like the little photo, like she wakes up every morning just like <laughs> hoping to take him on. <laughs> and, and I'm holding a meat cleaver as I'm working out at uh, Blink Fitness. <laughs> sure. That is awesome. I love it. Oh my goodness. What would you study? I don't know. I mean, um, other than let's say the real thing, like, you know, it'd be great to continue my studies in communications. Um, film would be nice. You know, I'm a huge Ooh. film fan. Yeah. My wife's getting a, a master's in film right now, and it's like one of those things where I'm not going to say I'm jealous, but I'm not going <laughs> to say I'm not. In a world where tuition was free, it'd be funny to do something really crazy like parapsychology or something, you know? Yeah, you could work for like the FBI and be a criminal profiler or something. Well, parapsychology is ghosts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I have like no idea. Like the Ghostbusters had uh, <laughs> degrees in parapsychology. No, wow. real psychology would actually be kind of fun because, so, like, wait, yeah. though, wait, though, wait. Parapsychology is not a thing, though, right? I, probably not, but like, okay. I don't know. I know that the Ghostbusters <laughs> had degrees in parapsychology, <laughs> well, so I, mean, I don't know if that's a real thing that's offered anywhere. If it's if, in a movie, it's got to be true, I right? I mean, as long as the tuition is free, because you're never going to use this aside from telling people, like, I have a doctorate in parapsychology. <laughs> I wonder what the um, what the book would look like. You you know, in order to have a doctorate in stuff, you usually have to write a book. Yeah, like a dissertation. Yeah. A dissertation, that's the word. Yeah, when, yeah, for a master's, it's a thesis. And for a PhD, it's a dissertation. And I can just, let me just, let's brainstorm some, some sure. titles. Sure. <laughs> wow. So now that I've said that out loud, I have no ideas for what the, the titles for this book could be. But I, I just feel like there's so much opportunity. For... A look into a mind that isn't there. <laughs> you... Yeah, Look at that. Good yeah. for you. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to write 100 pages on it, so I might oh, as well God, be able no. to spit out a title. When I wrote my master's thesis, it was like 110, 120. A dissertation is like 300. Okie dokie. Yeah. <laughs> so be prepared. All right. How about <laughs> oh, you? God. Um, I think I would go back for history. I mean, that's what I studied originally. That's actually my retirement plan, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know what it's like in New Jersey, but in Minnesota, if once you reach retirement age, you can go to school tuition free for the rest of your life at any state school. So that's that's. Is sort there of any world where, like, if we don't have that here, you'd move back to Minnesota? To totally. Do it? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I guess I can't say totally. Absolutely. There, there might be circumstances sure. that would, you know. Mm, make that impossible or silly or whatever. But but yeah, um, I was a medievalist the first time around. I have a master's degree in uh, medieval history. I wrote my, my thesis on, um, this is so esoteric and ridiculous. It's um, the Black Death of 1348. Pastorella pestis. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah. Where did you come up with that? I just know that. You just know that? Yeah. Damn, I okay. used to be kind of a history buff myself. So, what? Yeah. How have we never talked about this? Because how does that ever come up in conversation? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I wrote my, my master's thesis on the Black Death of 1348 in medieval Iberia, which mm -hmm. is Spain, mm -hmm. and how it affected religious intolerance among Christians toward Jews. Wow. So really uplifting, happy subject matter. Well, it was definitely a downer <laughs> of a subject. It but it's horrible. I think I remembered that because it's so fascinating. You know, yeah. like you had this one thing that happened that totally transformed an entire continent. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's very Changed intriguing. a lot yeah. of stuff, yeah. yeah. So, but this time around, um, I never really considered American history before. I always thought that it was a little too easy because it starts, well, for us, it starts so late. I mean, you can talk about Native American history for as long as you can yeah, talk sure. about Indo-European history. Um, but I loved the Ken Burns uh, special on the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Oh, my gosh. It completely changed how I thought about the Civil War. And then I listened to, as a book on tape, the trilogy North and South. 
mm-hmm. which was fantastic. And so I have become a pretty big Civil War buff all of a sudden. Cool. Like in the last four or five years, mm-hmm. which is so random. Huh. <laughs> I actually am planning, because I'm a big nerd, I'm planning a little summer getaway to Gettysburg soon. <laughs> I, nice. I've been there, yeah. Have you? Yeah. Well, really? we went we went for like the the historical like let's say sense of it. But you get there and for whatever reason they really lean into it as like a haunted town. Yes, I've heard like, that. Yeah, like I I it didn't strike me as the kind of thing like you get there and you're like, "Okay, like why are there ghosts everywhere yeah. you know, or, or like ghost paraphernalia and stuff everywhere." But um it was fun. I mean, we um we did like a couple of the the Civil War things and then at night we did the the ghost hunting stuff. We went into this old um, barn, I guess. Well, it was like an old house with an old barn. And um, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and they gave us some, like, ghost hunting stuff. And we went around the house, like, looking for ghosts. What is the ghost hunting stuff? What is the paraphernalia that comes with ghost hunting? Oh, my gosh. They have, like, EMF readers, because I guess, like, oh if a ghost was, you know, like, imagine... <laughs> what is this, um, Ghostbusters? Are you Peter, yeah. uh, what was yeah. his name? Vechner? Venkman. Pe- Venkman. Come on, come on. <laughs> They had a, in the movie, they had the PKE reader. In real life, we're going to put that in quotes. In real life, you catch ghosts with the EMF readers. So you electromagnetic ghosts? fields. You I guess you can't catch, catch them? them. You hope to find them. And then we have a conversation with them? Or they scare the pants yeah, off you? Well, or what like happens they had, then? They had people that had recorders, and they were asking questions in the air. And I guess the idea would be, like, later on, you know, you would you would listen back to the tape, and there would be, like, ghosts talking to you. I'm sure it's never happened. I don't know. But I can't even. The scariest thing for me, I'm going through the barn and I see it was um this really long snake skin on the ground. And I was like, that's a really big snake. And what I know of snakes when they, you know, shed their skin is that they get bigger. Yeah. Which means that something even bigger than yeah. that is well, around here somewhere. Absolutely. So I, that was terrifying. Yeah, yeah, sounds terrifying. Yeah. So I actually know um, the woman who runs the Gettysburg Chamber of Commerce is a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Carrie Stewart. Yeah. And uh, I am going to demand that she tell me all about the ghosts of Gettysburg because yeah. now I'm very intrigued. Well, I guess the idea was that so many people died in the war yeah, that they, they want to say that it's haunted. Like the field that. itself is haunted? Yeah, I don't know. Damn. <laughs> the way they make it sound, it's the whole town. But, you know, all of huh. us tourists, they need to do something to keep us entertained at night, I guess. <laughs> So, Angela, tell us a little about what's going on at Berkeley College. We're getting ready to graduate uh, our class of 2018. We have more than 2,000 students who will be graduating, oh my God. Uh, walking at the Prudential Center, and that's in May. Hmm? Uh, I know the show airs. Yeah, yeah May. In, and it's either going to be the end of May or early June. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So on May 11th, uh, we're very proud of, of this graduating class, of all our graduating classes, and uh, we also have our this will be our second class graduating with a master's degree because we started our master's program three years ago, our master's in business administration and management at the at our Woodland Park campus and online. So anyone who'd like to pursue a um, master's of business administration and management can also do so online uh, through Berkeley College. And Berkeley College is a very diverse institution. We're career focused. Our mission is to empower students to achieve lifelong success and dynamic careers. So we do that by immediately introducing them to their career paths and options uh, at the beginning of, of their tenure as students. They uh, are introduced to resume writing, uh, interviewing skills, internship opportunities. We have a team of professionals from career services who work with our students from the beginning uh, to get them prepared for their internships, for their jobs, and for their career opportunities when they graduate from Berkeley College. We offer lifetime career assistance. So if you graduated from Berkeley College in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, you'll always have somebody at your disposal if you'd like to reach out for help. That's really cool. That's that, incredible. Yeah, that time period when you're getting ready to graduate, that's terrifying. Yeah. And, you know, if you offer them the help to uh, to get through that, like maybe make the transition a little easier, that's awesome. And we also host numerous career fairs. In, in one year, we could have over 300 events all geared toward the career aspect of the education, whether it's on-site career fairs, workshops, panel discussions, alumni events that connect alumni with our students. There's so much to choose from, and our team is always on hand to help our students. Very cool. That's amazing. So I think we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to play Awful or Awesome. All huh? right.
And we're back, and it is time to play Awful or Awesome. I'm going to name three things, and we each have to decide very quickly if it's awful or awesome, and then be prepared to defend our answers. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First up, LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is awesome. <laughs> it's an awesome way to connect with people, but there's some awful things that could happen on it. <laughs> I, would, I think you could say that about social media. I, I mean, I think you're right. It's, I agree with you. I think it's awesome, but I think that there are some awful aspects to LinkedIn. Well, I think it's more the etiquette of LinkedIn that could oh, be awful. Like, yeah, that's like, a good way of putting it. If someone invites you to connect and you accept the connection, and then two minutes later, they're in your mail inbox. Selling you something. Selling you something mm -hmm. or asking you to rate them. Yeah. And you don't even, you're yes. just making the connection on LinkedIn because you know them through right. someone in your network. You're meeting them for the first time through the network. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I would say. Is I would agree with you. Yeah. Then? Yeah, I don't know. I I don't use it nearly as much as I should. Right. You know, like the the notifications will come through my phone sometimes, and sometimes I go in and check it, and other times I don't. Mm -hmm. Angela actually, before meeting us today, friended us both on LinkedIn. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I was just, you know, I feel so bad. But she came in totally boned up. She was like talking to us about some of our background, and the two of us were just totally embarrassed. We, we were. Like, How did you know that? Right. You know? Right. How did you know I was? So I I, I found out that uh, Vinny was the editor of his school newspaper at yeah. Ryder University. Yeah, this is true. Well, the manager editor. It was me and one other person. Wow. So, but yeah, it was, it was a big a deal. Long, it, it was a big deal. <laughs> you're, a real, you're, a real, you're a real journalist. I was at one point in my life. Yeah, yeah people don't know that because I don't really do writing here for NJBIA, no. but I have a very strong writing background, reporting, um, feature writing, all that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, and actually um, my main specialty was I was amazing, or still am, at like InDesign laying out the paper and everything. So yeah. Rock on. Yeah, I know, right? I had no idea. Yeah. I'm a communications like aficionado. <laughs> wait, yeah, when, when cut and paste actually meant cutting the paper <laughs> right. and okay, pasting well, it on a page. At that point, <laughs> uh, all right, so at that point Good we call. were doing it all on computers, but when I was in high school we had a very serious journalism program and um, we actually did have to do that with like the X-Acto knives. Um, oh my God. Yeah, we would print out the pages in like Adobe PageMaker and then we would cut out the columns and paste it onto like these giant 11 by 17. Uh, oh my gosh, we're getting way off. LinkedIn is awesome. <laughs> I don't use it nearly as much as I should, but I should get to it. Yeah. Um, I would agree. I will say that sometimes I have weird Facebook moments with LinkedIn. Like mm. somebody, fri not friended me, linked with me or connected with me sure. recently. And it wasn't anybody that I knew, which happens on LinkedIn. Like, I mm. connect with people I don't know all the time. You know, you just increase sure. your network. But this person's profile pic, I couldn't really see it. And their title was, like, something like dining room coordinator at the Panera Bread in somewhere California. And I was like, really? You're connecting with me? Maybe they're a fan of the show. Maybe. Th okay, that's a possibility. <laughs> But I just was, it was so, so random. It was it was like one of those moments where you get a, a Facebook uh, a friend invite from somebody that you're just like, this is obviously a scam, right? Okay, right like yeah, this is right. obviously, mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to give a me a troll. virus or a troll, right, exactly. So um, yeah, I, I had a moment where I had to rethink my open door policy with LinkedIn. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, all right, next one. Okay, we're gonna have to think back. Put on, get into the way back machine. I'm, I'm there. People who wear their pajamas to class. That's an interesting one. Um, I don't remember that happening a ton on my campus, but I mean, I if you don't if you don't, if you don't go as far as pajamas, like slumming it. Oh yeah, people were doing that all the time. <laughs> yes. And I'm not I'm not going to say it was either awful or awesome. I guess as an adult, if I was to go back to school now and I saw people doing it, I'd probably be a little bit more annoyed with it than yeah. I was at the time. I mean, you got to remember. Oh, maybe not. All right, so like, let's say I'm trying to put myself back in that college frame of mind. Right. You know, it's like. 8 o'clock in the morning, yeah. you're just waking up after like six hours of somebody down the hall making all kinds of racket all night because, you know, that happens in yeah. college. And now I can imagine like as somebody who has a baby who's making all kinds of racket <laughs> all hours a night, yeah, I can relate, you know? So if like you needed to like roll out and just tunnel vision, get yourself to class no matter what it took, maybe I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. My generation is the one that leaned hard into plaid flannel. Okay. So there was a lot of plaid flannel pajama bottoms on my campus. And I went to school in Minnesota where it was chilly, obviously, mm. in the morning. Um, actually, all day long, really. Yeah. Um, and so I am certainly guilty of having put on my fair share of pajama bottoms and a sweatshirt and rolling myself to class. But I didn't do it very often, you know, because uh. at the end of class, when you're finally awake and you look around the room and you realize that you look like death warmed over and mm. everybody else is like, 
cute in their jeans and their sweater sets and their ponytails. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I left the house looking like this. What is wrong with me? Never again. I do remember we had a guy, and I can't remember his name, he would wear a t-shirt and shorts, no shoes, no socks to class just about every day. Didn't matter how cold it was outside. And I I no remember shoes? thinking, yeah, no, no shoes. Uh, like I couldn't even what? imagine walking around on that campus like without shoes on. I mean, that's, that's just so gross. gross. Yeah. I had a professor once who taught math with and he was and he didn't wear shoes to class. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he was a professor and he left his shoes in his office, Maybe I could get on board, but I don't. Okay, so like, as weird as it would be to walk (laughs) around the campus without shoes, I don't. I think it would be even worse walking around like the academic buildings without shoes. So like, I couldn't even imagine leaving them in the office and then going to the class now. Yeah. Yeah, it's very gross. Yeah. All right. Next up. Well, no. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Gosh, sorry about that, Angela. Like, I'm with Vin. With uh, if you can make it to class and you have to wear your pajamas, go for it. But at the same time. You need to put a little effort into Mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, (laughs) keeps you awake. Yeah, (laughs) right. It does. I mean, you're you're building your network without even realizing it. You know, you're making connections with other students, making connections with professors, and if that's what you're putting out there, you know, every day, no shoes. Well, (laughs) it's it's, think about it this way: anything that you're wearing could be captured. Mm-hmm. On camera at any time. That's true. That's scary. That my my generation did not have to worry about that. Mm. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself okay? So like you at Berkeley College, you know, you you probably have to put out a lot of publications with photos of the campus in it. Do you ever find like you took a photo of just like the campus mall or something, and you got a lot of students doing nice, cool things or whatever, and then in the background there's like somebody wearing their pajamas or something. <laughs> You know, it's like just something where you're like, really, did that guy have to be in the, you know? Uh, where's the Photoshop? Yeah. <laughs> well, Does that ever happen or do you? Uh, I can't say that it's happened because our school is predominantly a commuter school with the exception mm-hmm. of our White Plains campus, yeah, sure. which has residences. Okay. Plus, fashion is one of our top majors. So oh, I'm always okay. looking to the background for the fashion tips because mm-hmm. a lot of our students are very fashionable. Okay. Uh, but yes, there could, there's that background shot, like, you know, people waving mm-hmm. or like, Doing, doing the base yeah. thing uh-huh. or, yeah, but not the pajama part. Okay. No. Okay, that's good. All right, last one, naps. Oh, I miss a good nap. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, so I've never really been able, in my adult life, I've never really been able to nap. Um, it's just like, if it's the middle of the day, my brain is either going too fast, you know, like I can't shut it up. Or there's always just something that I would rather be doing. Like, you know, if, if I'm laying down in bed, just looking to take like a half an hour nap, like I'll be sitting there thinking like, well, I could be doing X, Y, and Z. And I, fine, I'll get up and do it. Yeah. You know, so I just, I can't. I wish I could. Yeah. It would be so nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually the same. As a kid, I resisted in every way possible taking a nap. I couldn't. I, I couldn't get over the idea that I might be missing something. So I wouldn't take a nap as a kid. And as an adult, I still feel the same way. And even when I give in and I lie down for a little while and I take a nap, I never do it properly. I always sleep for too long and I wake up groggy and angry and then I, I'm mm-hmm. awake all night long and it's just, it's a terrible experience every time. I'm not a napper. No. Mm. Not a napper. I'm a multitasker yeah. and I don't want to yeah. miss anything. Yeah. FOMO, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, if I could take a nap, my dad always took naps. Yeah. Like, he could just work 15 hours, but in the middle of the day for 10 minutes, he could just take that nap. I've heard that that's and, really yeah. healthy. You know, if you can take, like, we don't have really, like, a society that encourages it, but in the middle of the day, if you were to take, like, a 15, 20, 30 minute nap, that's supposed to energize you to get to the rest of the day without, you know, yeah. without a coffee break or without anything like that. I actually yeah. have a good friend who's a really big time lawyer uh, for the firm McCarter and English out of Newark. And Shout uh, out to McCarter. And yes, this is actually, okay, shout out to Frank Ferugia. He's a very big time lawyer. Mm. He ha- told me once that he will take, like, a little piece of his afternoon for 10 minutes, he'll close the door and sit comfortably in his chair and close his eyes and set a timer for 10 minutes. And he doesn't sleep, I don't think, but maybe he'll meditate and he will wake up, you know, quote unquote, wake up completely refreshed and he will power through the rest of his day and just be like gangbusters and going crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's so impressive, people who can do that. I don't know how they do that. Because 
even when I try to meditate, my brain will not shut off. And I'm constantly yeah. like, what should I do next? What's, well, I need to pick that up for the grocery store. And oh, I need to get mm -hmm. lemon juice. And I need to do the laundry this weekend. And what about, blah, blah, blah. I have found that in the last year, I got like a little noise machine. And that actually really does help. Okay. So oh. maybe I could try now, you know, but yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> you have to find a quiet place, though. The meditation, you, you, yeah. you mentioned it. Like napping is one thing. Meditation, finding that quiet time to just focus on. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, maybe music even. Um, so yes. while we were at Lamaz you know, months ago, they had this thing where they were going to try to hypnotize all of us into just like calming down and relaxing. And they had us bring like a pillow just in case we fell asleep. I think I was the only person in the room who did fall asleep. But like, <laughs> I'd like to believe maybe not. But yeah, it happens. Like they had this really like calming music and there was the ocean wave sound going on and the woman is talking in this very slow mm. voice. You know, there's gotta be some combination of something that could get you to nap, who knows? I'll be honest, I have a, a sleepy time playlist that I play as I'm falling asleep yeah. because Ooh. it gives me something to focus on and think about it, rather than have my brain just spin off in different directions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I actually started with a Sleepy Time playlist and then Sleepy Time 2 and then Sleepy Time 3 and the song, the so list kept changing. what's the song changing. on your uh, Sleepy Time playlist? Oh my goodness, what's the song? Oh, um, there is Tom Waits' A Place For Us. Okay. It's very slow and deep and melodic. Um, there is a couple of remakes. God, of course now I can't think of a single one. <laughs> God damn. Well, I mean, in theory, you're not really supposed to be like rocking along to no, this. No, I'm just not. in the background, you know, and you. Yeah, Absolutely. so I, I, I can feel that. Yeah. yeah, it's just very chill, yeah. chill out kind of music. Do you meditate, Angela? You, you talk about it as if you do. Well, sometimes, sometimes I do. That's cool. I'm impressed. It's um, I, I, I've taken some meditation classes, and it's just, it's just a good way to calm, calm yourself, yeah. but also just to focus on things that you'd like to focus on and it's even pe some people pray some people meditate it's mm. just a, a good way to bring some balance to your life and some peace to your life and to find time for it i like that i've never been able to successfully meditate so i'm always impressed well, you might think that like all right so there's there's that standard you know when you say the word meditate you have like an image that pops <laughs> in your mind of what you're supposed to be doing meditation can be just about anything you yeah know, you could be doing something that you love to do that just clears your mind, mm -hmm. gets you in that zone, and then, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, someday maybe I'll get there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, that's like that moment of zen, right? The zen Literally? <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. Literally. Yeah. All right, so how can people get in touch with Berkeley College and you specifically if they want to? Well, with me specifically, sure. they can. I'm, I'm going to give you my mobile phone number, 201 okay. 306-7163. If anyone would like to learn more about Berkeley College, sure. they can call me directly, or you can visit our website at www.berkeleycollege.edu. Nice. Very cool. That's our show. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thank you for subscribing. We yeah. appreciate the support. If you like us, maybe give us a five-star review on iTunes because it helps people find us. We would love that. Yes, we really would. Thank you to New Jersey, Manu New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, so check them out. And I think that's it. Maybe uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Angela, for joining <laughs> Thanks us. Thanks for having Thank me. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.